everyone, this is Fantasy Esque, and welcome to Niche Cupid Clan. It has been a long time since we have lost been on our niche adventures, but I was very much in the mood and I am quite ahead on my scheduled videos, so I have like a little bit of free time to be able to do this. Um, but I have this idea since, you know, not that long ago we had Valentine's Day, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to kind of have a bit of a random like Cupid setup for our nichelings? Like how fun would that be? And throw in a bit of royalty and I think we are good to go. Thus this series, this idea was born and I was dying to share it all with you guys. So that's exactly what I'm going to go ahead and do and I hope you guys enjoy because I feel as though a bunch of us on the channel are waiting for niche videos and it has been years since we have seen niche on the channel and I feel like the old niche videos are getting popular again um, with my viewers and I thought well I think people want niche let's give them more niche so that's exactly why we are here now previously we've had like rule scrolls where I break down how we're gonna play exactly. This time around I want to be a little bit more flexible so I have concepts in my brain about how this is gonna go down um, but nothing set in stone, nothing too concrete so that we can change things if and when we want to make stuff spicier than might be going on. So, you know, if, if I want to change, then I'm not gonna be hard and fast towards a rule. If I'm enjoying it though, I see no reason to change it. But okay, let me explain to you guys where this Cupid thing is coming. So, to do that, I need to first show you guys the roles that we are starting off with. So we have three nichelings, two males, three females, which, you know, the genders were kind of randomized, and I feel like this setup works as long as you have two females at least or two males at least um, and then we're all good to go. Now in the future I'm gonna introduce maybe more roles and give them certain things to do. For now we have uh, four I suppose. Um, well you know three, four, I don't know, we'll see. We have those roles and they have slightly different things that they're supposed to do within the clan. So the most important member of the clan is right in the middle here, and this is our Empress, and she looks so cool. This is Empress Eurasta, and um, she has the dark purple stones of royalty. Now, the Empress is going to be the nicheling that is leading the clan, is arranging marriages between nichelings when they come of age, um, so like political marriages. Um, she is also the one who is gonna appoint certain nichelings into roles if like we, if a role dies out, for example, um, because I have decided that the roles or the class of nichelings will be passed on based on the mother, and this is important. This is important because our nichelings won't always be breeding with someone of their class or even nichelings they're married to. So we might have affairs and all sorts of spicy exciting stuff going on. So the Empress over here, those are kind of her duties as well as just enjoying herself aka eating food wherever she can find it. Um, so we have the Empress and then we have our Emperor Silo. So the Emperor is married to the Empress, of course, and he is um, one of like two rulers of the clan, but you know, his, his wife has more control because this society is more matriarchal, I imagine. But his primary role is literally just to enjoy himself. That is, that is his role, to enjoy himself by eating food um, and basically like patrolling the safe established zones of their empire and kind of you know showing other nichelings that he is in charge like wandering inspecting that's kind of his job and then we have this hunky male to the left this is advisor procene and he's like the most beautiful nicheling here like i am in love with him cupid yeah cupid's bow cupid's arrow right here i am in love with him but the advisor is going to be like a scout nicheling almost 
and the uh yeah he's going to be the one that clears the grass away for the emperor and the empress he's the one that is going to be um guiding their path or showing them that you know this is this place is safe this is where you can go this is where you might be able to adventure or this is how like where we're going to grow our empire so the advisor is kind of in charge of that um, and then we have our two gods. The, sorry, the advisor has light purple stones. And then the gods have white stones. So the gods are supposed to protect royalty. Uh, and primarily the emperor and empress. So the emperor and empress should always have a god next to them. On a tile next to them. And the gods are supposed to, well, help god. Um, if they don't have attack, like in the case of Uriira, then it is their job to like throw their body in front of the Emperor or Empress if there is any sign of danger. Um, so their kind of their lives are essentially only for the purpose of preserving royal lives. So that's kind of the gods' role. Now the gods can help clear the grass as long as they're on a tile next to whoever they're assigned to, like the Emperor or the Empress. So Uriah over here is um, Silo's god, and then Sosta is Eurasta's god. Um, and the Emperor and Empress, they cannot clear away any grass. They can't touch grass. They can only um, adventure or interact with things on a cleared grass tile. So like, even if there's berries, they can only eat those berries if someone else has cleared the grass for them, therefore has, you know, made it safe to do so. Um, otherwise, they kind of just wander around in advent, like uh, in safe cleared zones. So that's the Emperor and the Empress. Now the Emperor and the Empress, they can um, separate from each other, so they can go in different directions, but their gods have to stick with them. So that's kind of some of the roles that we have. The reason why I said three or four is because, you know, Emperor is one role, Empress is another role, since they have slight differences in their duties. Okay, and now we need to talk about the Cupid part. Like, what is happening with the Cupid part? And I'm actually going to take some notes while I do this because I wanted, to, I wanted to show you guys like how it is going to work going forward. So our nichelings are going to have certain marriages, I suppose, that happen um, within their class, maybe outside of their class, depending on, you know, maybe randomization, what the Empress decides, um, when they become adults. But also, our nichelings are not always going to breed with whoever they're married to because there's another factor entirely that is going to decide who they breed with. So our nichelings are only going to breed or initiate a breeding with the nicheling they are in love with. So how is this decided? Well, as soon as a nicheling becomes an adult, and these nichelings, by the way, live for about 30 days total, which is, you know, not that much time. So they're babies for two days, they're children for four days, teenagers for four days, adults for 20 days, and they have three day pregnancies. Now, as soon as a nicheling becomes an adult, we are going to roll. So we come here to the family tree um, and say we're on Empress Eurasta. So we have two males over here. So essentially, we're going to roll between these two males to see who she's in love with. Now, even though she's married to Silo, if she is in love with the advisor, then Eurasta will only choose to breed with the advisor. Um, so for that reason, I have decided that a child's class or role will be passed down depending on the mother. So Eurasta's kids will be royalty. Um, it's passed on through females. Um, and so we have two female gods, which means their children are going to all be gods. Um, therefore, we are probably going to have to, at some point, us get Eurasta, the empress, to assign another nicheling into the advisor role if Procene dies. Because he's not a female, that role doesn't get passed on to his child. Um, but anyways, so Empress Eurasta, for example, let's say she's in love with Procene. So she will only choose to mate with Procene. However, Procene might not be in love with her. So when it comes to Procene, like I said, we're going to roll for every single niche link to see who they're in love with. So Procene might be in love with Sosta, right? So if Procene's initiating a breeding, he will only choose to initiate a breeding with Sosta. 
So that is kind of how this Cupid thing is going to work. So we might have, you know, one-sided love, like um, an unrequited love, um, affairs, all those kind of things. You know, incestuous love, forbidden love, who knows. But also, um, we have this thing with our nichelings, which I feel like in our challenges we rarely do, but we have mutations. And this time around I did think about mutations. So when do our nichelings get mutations? Well, the only time our nichelings are going to be getting mutations if we have a true love situation. What is a true love situation? Well, if Eurasta is in love with Procene, and Procene is likewise in love with Eurasta, then that is considered a true love, and both Procene and Eurasta will get to pick their mutations. Now, for me, because I'm not that fussy with mutations, I am probably just going to randomize like what mutations they get, but that is something kind of like a blessing that both of them get because they have a true love. So I hope you guys enjoy like the premise that we have going on and see how things are gonna work because I can't lie like I am so hyped about these guys and actually even though this is like an introductory episode I do want to do the exciting stuff here uh, as soon as possible I actually want to roll um, to see who everyone is in love with and then I can also show you guys how we're gonna keep track of that or at least try to um, in their kind of name titles. So let me get my randomizer app set up. Okay, nice. So we're gonna start off, um, I think with Eurasta, oh no, we'll start off with Sosta. We'll start off with Sosta. Um, so okay, Sosta, who are you? She, she's not married to anyone. Uriah isn't married to anyone either. We only have one marriage right now, and that's between Silo and Eurasta. Um, so we might see who the... Should we get the Empress to choose, maybe, uh, for someone? Should we do that? Uh, I mean, Procene is the only one unmarried so far. So maybe Procene? There should be a marriage between Procene and someone? Uh, why not? Let's try and do that. Okay, so Eurasta, this is one of the Empress's roles, by the way. She's going to choose a marriage for Procene. Actually, guys, actually, actually. See, this is something that I haven't entirely worked out just yet, but maybe I should? So maybe if... Because there should be benefits to a marriage. Like, why else would they be married, right? So maybe if two nichelings are married, then the child's role will be dependent on the gender of the child. So, for example, if Advisor marries one of the gods, then a girl child will be a god and a male child will take on the father's role of Advisor. Maybe that's like the benefit of a marriage. But if um, nichelings outside of a marriage have a child, then they will always inherit the mother's role. I think that's what we're going to do. So, Persine, who are you going to marry? So Sosta is going to be one, and Uriah is going to be two, and this is the Empress arranging the marriage, by the way. And we have rolled a two! Okay, so Procene is going to be married to Uriah. Okay, so we'll have Uriah's initials up here. So Advisor Procene GU. So Advisor Procene GU, so that's like who he's married to, and then God Uriah. We'll do um, AP. God Uriah AP. So that way we know, okay, these are the nichelings that they are married to. And, ah, oh, guys, I really wanted to do, like, the love situation. Like, I wanted to see who they're in love with because we're going to go through next, like, every single nicheling here. And we are going to roll to see who they are in love with. And then things are going to get spicy. We can start doing the breedings and all of that. But like I said, I want to keep this to bite-sized episodes. So I am going to wrap up here. Why don't you guys let me know who you ship, who you like. So again, this is Sosta. This is Uriah. This is Procene, the handsome Procene, my favorite nicheling right now. Empress Silo. 
and then we have Empress Eurasta. So let me know who you ship, who you like, what kind of love stories, storylines you might want to see going forward. Um, and also if you support the marriage of Procene and Uraira. Um, and when we come back in the next episode, then we are going to be rolling to see who everyone's loves are. And then things are going to get really exciting. We can start the breedings. But okay, guys, with that said and done, I am going to leave off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.